Hey, what's up guys? Matt and Jack here with the Toasty Bros. And today we are doing an RX 6400 build. And this is inside of an Optiplex because it just makes perfect sense because that thing is low profile. Low profile cards are something we love here at the Toasty Bros. And we want to see how well it works with an Optiplex. There's a chance it might not even work because Optiplexes are a little bit finicky, but I have a feeling it's going to work great. And for $350, it's going to game. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Newegg and their Helix Business Desktop line. And this model, the Workplex, featuring fully custom PCs designed for office work, made in the USA, and includes zero proprietary hardware. As your business grows, this computer can grow with you by being easily upgradable. And also don't forget that you can get these upgrades from Newegg's wide selection of PC hardware. Check the link down below to learn more and use our special 5% off code for Toasty Bros viewers only. Thanks again to Newegg for sponsoring today's video. Now now let's get into it, shall we? So if you guys aren't new to the channel, you probably know we do all kinds of crazy Optiplex upgrades and downgrades and sideways grades. So yeah, the thing is we've been doing Optiplexes for years. We have a 7020 here that we'll go over the specs in just a minute with a really nice i7. We're gonna be upgrading with an SSD and this graphics card. It's super easy to do and even you can do it at home. But one of the main things we're trying to figure out here is does the 6400 make sense inside of this? Because there's some really interesting points about it that might not even make the system work at all in this video, might not ever even go live and I'm just talking to no one right now, but maybe it will go live. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. So let's go ahead and talk about the Optiplex and then we'll dive into all the mystery behind this RX 6400. Typical eBay special here. You can get these Dell Optiplexes from everywhere. eBay, go to your old school, go to your old office, whatever. They just, they're very, very prevalent. Dell is a really popular pre-built company for OEMs. And uh, you know, they used to ship these things out by the thousands to big companies and corporations. So now they're just kind of, you know, collecting dust to some places. A lot of places are upgrading slowly but surely. And so they sell these things typically by the pallet full. And this one is definitely taking some damage. I don't know if it was in our, <laughs> This might have happened on the way because the DVD drive is not in there. I don't know if that was part of the listing. I can't remember. Did no, it shoot all the way back? That's pushed back. Oh boy, this one's taking a beating. It's definitely, and uh, to be fair, I cannot give these guys any benefit of the doubt for shipping because this box was about the size of the Optiplex with like a single layer of bubble wrap. You guys got to keep in mind, if you're ever shipping a PC, this is now the thousandth PC we bought this had damage in shipping. Um, they're heavy. They're big metal boxes. And do you really think putting a fragile sticker is going to make UPS or FedEx or any of those places really care about like gently sitting it down. No, they're gonna, it's gonna get tossed around. It's going through multiple delivery drivers. But yeah, it looks like we're gonna ha definitely have to do some bending and stuff. These things are really resilient though. We've seen worse than this and they work just fine. So I have no doubt that it should work. Uh, the, yeah, the side panel like didn't even fit on properly anymore. So we'll do some bending and some hammering and whatnot. We'll get it back to normal. DVD drive pops out. Just can I get it back in? Oh, I noticed you ordered an SSD little guy. It said it was a hard drive. SSD. It said on the listing it was a hard drive. But it's part of eBay. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> I'm actually so, shook by that. It says it has an 850 Evo 250 gig and it looks I like- I got a 500, so. We're going to throw a 480 in, but uh, the video just got cheaper. It got cheaper. Um, hey. So we could always throw that in as a secondary um, yeah. for our games and it's a pretty baller Optiplex at this point. <laughs> so it looks like we have two sticks of RAM. This only has two slots. And uh, do you remember, was this 18? It's actually, there's four. There's 18. There's another slot right here. <gasps> Whoa. I it has see four what sticks. Has all four sticks. It's it 24 like it's, gigs. It looks like it's all crucial. Maybe minus one or two sticks. So that, that's pretty cool. We'll have to actually, if we want to get to the, that is one thing about these small form factor. And that's what this is, by the way, this is not a DT, it's an SFF, meaning small form factor. And you have very limited room. You have to do a low profile graphics card. And if you look here, you have very limited length as well. So hopefully this card fits in fine. We're going to go ahead and get this off too, so that we can look at processor. This should be an i7-4790, but so far we, we have had some, some weird mystery items like the SSD. So we'll get this off real quick. We're going to reapply thermal paste anyways, because most most of the time, the resellers do not do this. That's something that we at PC Bros Tech, PC Bros Tech. You didn't know how to say his own company PC name. Bros Tech, <laughs> uh, we definitely always reapply thermal paste. We clean off the old stuff because a lot of times it does not look great. And it looks like it's been reapplied not too long ago, but awful. you can definitely tell that they didn't clean the old stuff off first. And we have some major, thermal paste bleed over, which most of the time is fine, but sometimes it can get into spots it shouldn't and cause shorting because it is slightly conductive. So we're using rubbing alcohol. This stuff works really well for cleaning electronics off because it is definitely not conductive. 
um, and on top of that, well, don't submerge your computer in it, but not, uh, most for the most part, not conductive and it evaporates. That's really the best part about it. So we have a i7-4790. They did not lie about that. Let's go ahead and clean this cooler off. We're gonna grab some good Arctic MX-5 thermal paste. You could really use anything. I mean, really this thing might not even deserve Arctic, but this is going to get us the absolute best results for temps and FPS. You know, you don't wanna have any thermal throttling. I usually do about the size of like a small P. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. I definitely went a little bit liberal on that one, added quite a bit, but no big deal. Reinstall our cooler here. And I'm pretty excited about four sticks of RAM. We got an SSD, even though we weren't supposed to. We got a 4790, which is I think like pretty much the top of the you know, line before you get to like the K, like the extreme processors for fourth gen. So uh, four cores and eight threads, pretty, looking pretty good. The real problem though, that we're gonna run into, and Matt can touch on this a little bit more, is this 6400 has this very key word on it, and that's PCIe Gen 4. This lane right here, I believe is only Gen 3, correct? Mm -hmm, Gen 3. Yeah, and if you wanna touch on what that can do to a system. So the main issue is, with the RX 6400, it is PCI Gen 4, but the issue is, it is Gen 4 by 4. And most, most of the time, this slot right here, this blue slot, will be a by 16, and that is the bandwidth the PCI lane will allow you to well, utilize, and since this card is only by four at PCI four, which is acceptable on a Gen four slot, it's not gonna be acceptable on a Gen three because it won't run Gen three 16, it'll run Gen three by four. So that's literally like more than having like cutting in fourths. Yeah, I'd be cutting in fourths um, yeah, in terms of um, speed, so. I'm curious too to see if it actually has, I know you've taken a look at it, I think it does actually have the lane cut off. I don't right? know about this one. I know the 6500 XT did, but I would assume this one would too. Probably so where like would. it actually cuts off like the 460s. No, this one actually comes with the, oh, uh, that's no, cool. it's actually, so this is a full, they call this 16X, um, meaning it, the, the gold pins go all the way back. If it was cut to like here, like in half, it'd be 8X. And if it was cut to like here, it'd be 4X because it's a fourth of the way, basically. Good looking card though. Nice little heat sink on it. And, and I know you're probably thinking it's not a bad looking card, but compared to other low profile cards we've had in the past, it definitely has a little bit of beef to it. The other thing I like is it's a true single lane card. And that can definitely be a problem because look, look at where our lane is. It's right here. You could almost, I mean, I would say like a 1050 TI that has like the, where it's a single lane, but it's a double width cooler, probably wouldn't fit there. And if it did, it would be absolutely choked up. So- You can go ahead and install I, it. You're already I, there. I was gonna let Matt do No, something. I don't wanna okay. do it. He doesn't wanna do it. I don't wanna work I mean, today. actually last time he did try doing this, he ended up cutting himself. I, don't I know, did, I don't want that. I don't know how it happened. Two display outs. We have a display port and HDMI. I like the choice there. I like that we don't have two of the same one. So you got options. Looking good. We'll Sapphire Pulse card. Four gigs of VRAM too, which I'm excited about. That's definitely gonna um, help out. Well, I keep saying I'm excited. I'm I'm excited if this actually even works. There is a chance, you said you did some research and saw some people saying that the card like wouldn't even display out. So some AMD cards, like newer AMD cards have issues in these Optiplexes just because True. the BIOS doesn't support how it runs. But um, I, I don't know, this is like the latest and greatest from AMD right now. When I say greatest, I mean, it's like the newest oh. hardware out right now. So yeah. there is a slight chance hardware wise, it might have some issues, but um, well, you know what? We're about to find out and see if this is even possible because a lot of people may not advise you to do this because of the whole Gen 3 thing but we love Optiplexes, they're so cheap. Maybe the offset and performance from Gen 4 to Gen 3, just because how cheap the Optiplex is, might be worth still doing a 6400 build in. And that's what we're here to prove to you guys. Do you guys see me struggle for that? Do we wanna add in the SSD now or do we just? Let's just see what boots up. Yeah, let's just let's just see if it works. I mean, 250 gigs, I, I mean, for us will be enough, but like we, this to make this 350 bucks, we technically have this 480. Uh, I would say we got lucky with this one because what was it supposed to come with? 500? The 250 gig? gig hard drive. Oh, that's even worse. And that's I mean, why I got so, the SSD. So yeah. we really made out good here because the 250 gig hard drive is maybe worth about five to $10. I guess the one thing that we did lose some money on is we definitely <laughs> have damage. some cosmetic damage, but okay, what is that? That's the SSD. We need to we need to screw that in. But um, our power button still works. Whole front seems to be pretty good. We just have some damage in the back, but I mean we're looking good otherwise. I don't see any any major problems. So we'll see if she let's, works. Let's go ahead and get this rattly boy over there. All right, guys, with the RX 6400, we are now testing Fortnite, and we are running on performance mode, and we're gonna see what kind of FPS we can get. Performance mode has been hit or miss recently with uh, the PCs we've been testing. The really cheap stuff seems to do really well in performance mode, but the higher end stuff doesn't do so well in performance mode. But regardless, we're running performance mode, and we're going to see what kind of FPS we can get. And we really wanna see what that GPU utilization is. We wanna see if that GPU is getting fully utilized, or if it's receiving a bottleneck by running at 4X, um, and kind of just 
compare a little bit to the 300R PC we did with a 1050 Ti and a literally the same i7 um, and just see what kind of performance we have uh, and whether or not you should look for a used 1050 Ti low profile or go for a full size Opti, something of, the, of that nature. But um, we're gonna drop in real quick. I'm gonna get a sniper rifle and probably die. One thing that I'm not a fan of is the frame times are a little weird. It's definitely not the smoothest experience right now. We're especially loading stuff in, but it's not awful. Um, high, you're basically getting high refresh rate on an Opti. I was like, I got just booking it out of here. All right, whatever. You do you. But yeah, we're getting 60-ish FPS. Definitely some stutter here and there. Um, I don't know, it's not It's not the smoothest experience. Um, we could lower some settings a little bit, um, but it could just be the first run in Fortnite too. The textures need to kind of chill out a little bit. Jesus, if I let that person kill me, I would have been very embarrassed. There's our gunshots and I don't... What, oh, they're in here. What's the third party? Ah, uh, sorry buddy. So I could take this bus or is it? Oh, it's absolutely destroyed. Of that bot. This this blaster, look at this. I'm missing everything. I mean, to be fair, I'm just like spraying bullets. Nice try, forks and sporks. All right, let's heal up and then we'll just do what we normally do when we're running the Fortnite benchmarks. Get in that tank and start pushing some people. Oh, I see our first potential. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, he's gonna play this game. Oh, he knows what he's doing. He's not a bot like some of these other people have played in Fortnite. Wow, this, this person really knew what they're doing. They're just gonna blow up the tank. Wow, that's Fortnite. But I say this performance is acceptable. Just off the top of my head, I think this is very comparable to that 1050 Ti build. And 1050 Ti's right now, they're getting cheaper. They are getting cheaper. Um, but they're still gonna be a little bit more on the used market. But you do have to consider also a 1050 Ti has an Invink encoder, uh, which allows you to live stream. There is no hardware encoder at all on this GPU. You can't even use AMD's one that sucks. You like can't use it at all. So that's a big downside as well. But we are talking about low range systems. How do people really are using Invink? I don't know. Let's move on to the next game. All right, guys, we are now in Apex Legends and I'm wearing a whole new outfit because it's the next day. Um, I had to reinstall Apex Legends for some reason. It was acting kind of weird after I got that installed. But regardless, running medium low settings and uh, the FPS looks pretty good, man. I, we were definitely a GPU bottleneck. That 6400 is at 99%, but getting 100 FPS, 90 to 100 FPS, I mean, this is this is very impressive. This is way better than some of the other uh, systems we've tested so far um, on these settings. So um, yeah, let's just get some gameplay in. I'm not Jackson though, but I had to take his place because uh, we're kind of behind right now and I couldn't wait for him to come be an apex of God. Oh, this guy's cracked. This guy just juke me? He did. Ah! Woo, got him. Oh, take all the meds, thanks. There's the other guy. I just got absolutely mowed down. My team is getting absolutely manhandled. GPU is running a little bit hot though, but I mean, it's a low power card. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, oh God, I messed up. Oh, I see him. I want him. There definitely is. Oh, I'm whiffing. Oh. There's Apex Legends for you, ladies and gentlemen. Not too shabby, not too shabby. My teammates weren't helping me at all, so you know what, I did the best I could. Let's move on to a more demanding game. I believe in you, low settings with a RX 6400, a $350 Optiplex. Can you play Halo Infinite at 60 FPS and not crash again? So far, not there. Um, so what we're looking at is about 50 FPS. Uh, but the latency, as you can see, 20 milliseconds, it's a very like stuttery uh, 50 FPS. I wouldn't say actually, let me, let me correct myself. It's not stuttery, it just feels laggy because of that latency. And one thing I do have to note, and I don't really understand, and someone in the comment section, let me know, is there a particular reason why Halo Infinite did not implement, oh God did not implement full screen mode and just went borderless windowed because I feel like there's a lot of performance lost on these Opti's because they don't do that. But regardless, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop the render scale down to about, we'll do 80% and see what that does. Ooh, yeah, there we go. That feels a lot better. That's more of a 60 FPS experience. 
very close to 60. L little dips here and there, but yeah, on a $160 card, man, we're, we're getting some Halo Infinite now. I'm gonna get some kills and then I will go back to yapping about stuff. Finish him. I literally just clipped him. Oh, that was a clean one. One shot wonder, one shot wonder. Oh, how did I hit him? That was some lag. I don't really know how I hit that. And what the, oh no. That was not a battle I was gonna win, but I, I tr almost traded with him. But yeah, man, Halo Infinite, I'm very impressed with this Opti overall. I mean, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely recommend going this route and uh, you can kind of kill people in Halo. But overall, that's the benchmarks. Very happy with this system. Let's wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking this PC, and to our surprise, it was amazing in every single way. We really don't have any complaints, surprisingly. We thought that the whole Gen 4 bandwidth thing with an older system like this would be a big issue, but really, this card, at the time recording this video, we see going for like 140 to 170, and at that price, I mean, the be next best thing is like a 1650 low profile, and those are almost impossible to get, and they're really expensive. The only downside is there is physically no hardware encoder on here, but as I mentioned throughout the benchmark run, there's not a lot of people who buy Optiplexes to get in the live streaming. If you're someone who wants to do that, then sure, get a 1650 and pay a bit more, but in terms of just raw gaming performance, that RX 6400 is absolutely perfect for an Optiplex, and you should check the link down below whether you're gonna copy this one or build a different Optiplex or a different Office PC configuration, because that's a really good card regardless of the bandwidth limitations. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Now that we're done with this PC, we gotta do something with it. So we're gonna send it over to our other company, PCBros.tech, to sell to you guys. We sell office PCs like this, ones with 1650s if you're a streamer out there, and also some high-end gaming PCs that'll fit whatever budget you have. Use code TOASTYBROS2 on checkout to save 2%. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.